a binomial theorem today. Alright? So some like that. I'd 
let me explain. Okay, so uh, if I have a plus b to the power of n, so usually they will give you some something okay for a, something for b, and then a number for n. Right? n has got to be a number that is more than one. If it is just one itself, then there's nothing for us to expand on. Okay? So it has to be something more than one. Right? A and B are going to be some term itself. Okay? Maybe 3x, maybe negative 7. So it is not just limited to be a plus here. As long as your B is, if it is a negative 7, okay, then you end up becoming a minus 7 already. Okay? So for example, right? So in the expansion itself, you always start off with the one on the left, okay, to the power of n first. Then progressively down the uh, row, right? Okay, we find that let me choose a different color. The term that has a itself, okay, originally starts with n. It will go down to go on in a decreasing manner. So a to the power n minus one, then a to the power n minus two, a to the power n minus r, and then after that, subsequently no more a. Okay, actually it is an a to the power of zero. Right? So that is actually uh, where a actually went. Because a to the power of 0 is 1. Right? Then after we started off with no b at all. Okay? So just like how a actually to the power of 0 is ending off there, this actually is b to the power of 0. Okay? Then after that, b to the power of 1, b to the power of 2, and then finally we arrive at b to the power of n. Coming. Okay? So we see that the power of a for A itself, okay, powers of A, right, is actually decreasing, whereas powers of B increases, okay. Then after that, we have N choose 1 over here, technically over here, right, at the very start, it is an N choose 0, because N choose 0 is just simply 0. Uh, sorry, it's just 1. Okay, that's why we don't have anything over here. Right, that's why we only have A to the power of N. Okay? Then now at this point, you may be wondering, what is this thing over here? Okay, this is just a generic expression that we call the general term. So, any term that falls inside this expansion will have this pattern going on. Okay, and the general term is actually the r plus 1 term. Okay, so this is the first term. This one second. This one third. And then up to here, it will be the r plus 1. Okay, and then the last one over here will be of n plus 1. n plus 1 terms. Because if you think about your 2x plus 1, Let's say, okay, maybe not this one. If I talk about a plus b squared expansion, right? How many terms do I have at the end? I get three terms, okay? If I were to extend a plus b to the power of three, I will have a, a plus b squared times a plus b. Okay, I'm just showing it to you. In a very vigorous manner, a cubed plus a square b plus 2a square b plus 2a b square plus b square a plus b Okay, if I expand a plus b power 3, I will find that there are 4 terms. So power of 2, I get 3 terms. Power of 3, I get 4 terms. So if it's power of n, I will get n plus 1 terms at the end. You understand? Okay, there will always be one more extra okay, when you expand it fully and simplify. Alright? Then after that, the, uh, the formula list will also give you the definition of n choose r. So you won't be expected to actually simplify these numbers over here. Alright? As we progress on to show, uh, when I show you some examples, you may understand it better. Okay? So at this point, I'll leave this as, as it is first. Okay? Oh, sorry. One more thing, okay, is that we look at the powers of A and B, right? Okay? We find that the powers, they add up to be N all the time. So N plus 0 is N. N minus 1 plus 1, that is a 1, it becomes N. N minus 2 and power of 2 here, okay, will add up to be N. So every single time, 
the powers add up to the end sum. Okay? So let's look at try 7. To apply this formula. Okay, then 6 
choose one, you can press it into the calculator. I, I taught you all the other time already. And what should we get? Huh? Six choose one, we get six. Huh? Yeah, okay, sorry. Five. Okay, six. Then times three to the power of five. Okay. Two for three. Two for three. Okay, then after that, got x to the power of 4, so like x power of 5, and then 2. Okay, then 6 choose 2. I will have 15. 3 to the power of 4, 81. And then x to the power of 4, that's 4. 6 choose 3, 20. 3 to the power of 3, 20, uh, 3 uh, 27, yeah. Okay, then after that, x cube, 8. Right? Of course, if you can see things fast enough, you know that you have to take 6 choose 1, that's 3 to the power of 5, that's 2. You want, you can press calculator directly to see the multiplication of these 3 numbers. Same for the rest of the terms. Okay, finally you will get the answer to be 729x to the power of 6 plus 2916x to the power of 5 plus 4860x to the power of 4 plus 4320x cubed plus blah, blah, blah. also another limitation of the Pascal's triangle. Because Pascal's triangle, we know that it's 1 plus B only. But down here, there's no 1s at all. So you find that the Pascal's triangle typically doesn't really work for all cases. But I'm just introducing the Pascal's triangle to you so that you are familiar with such a number pattern. Okay? Because it's a very unique uh, and very beautiful number pattern itself. Right? Uh, but then usually, it wouldn't ask you to do it all out uh, in full. Uh, okay?
data just over a check. I hope that you are able to get at least the first four terms. The first one should be x to the power of 4 plus 4 choose 1 times x cubed times 2y plus 4 choose 2 times x squared times 2y brackets squared plus 4 choose 3 times x plus times 2y to the power of 3 the brackets then. Okay. Then the very next one, okay, the question says that it's only to the power of 4, right? You may have this, okay. Okay, you may get this one, which is fine if you write it this way, because the next one should be 4 choose 4, x, the yeah, originally was x power 1 here, then after it becomes 0, because it should be a decreasing order. Then the next one should go up increasing. But definitely, this is where you should stop. You should not actually end up having 4 choose 5. Because otherwise, then this one should be what? Negative 1? Okay, it doesn't work that way. Right, so we need to know that we have to stop here. And also, okay, how to confirm that is where we stop? Because I mentioned, whatever power we are given, there should only be plus 1 more of that number. Okay, so with a power of 4, there should be a total of 5 terms. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms here. Okay, and that is where we say that it stops. Right? It is fine if you write it in this manner, or if you want to add it off in this manner, okay, you can write it as just simply 2y to the power of 4. Okay, there's nothing wrong with writing it this way. But if you write it this way, okay, it should probably be a sign for yourself, okay, that this is where it stops already. Because it can the bottom number here, okay, cannot go any higher than four. Right? So then after that we expand or we calculate, okay, do a calculation and simplify the answer. We should be getting x to the power of four plus eight x cubed y plus twenty-four x squared y squared plus 32 xy cubed plus 16 y to the power of 4 Okay? Is anyone not able to get this answer or needs clarification at this juncture? We all go up. Okay? Okay, next we continue with try 7 part B. Now that we kind of uh, got used to this formula already. So what if I have x squared minus 2 over x to the power of 8? Then how should I go about expanding this? Okay. Once again, we need to recognize the a, b and n in order to apply the formula. a will be my x squared. Okay, maybe let me just write here. Okay, my a will be x squared. Find B, okay, you need to be very careful because this is a plus B, this is a minus 2 over X. So we need to recognize the B to be negative 2 over X. Okay? So we need to take into account the minus sign here. And then the N value that we need to have will be 8. Okay, so once we have settled this, we plug this in into the formula. So we get X squared to the power of n, 8, okay, plus 8 choose 1, x squared to the power of 7, times negative 2 over x, okay, followed by 8 choose 2, x squared to the power of 6, negative 2 over x to the power of 2, plus 8 choose 3, x squared to the power of 5 negative 2 over x to the power of 3 and that's it because we only need the first 4 terms so we see that we got 4 terms we stop at r equals to 3 if I want 5 terms then I will stop at r equals to 4 okay then now again it will be a test for your uh, indices loss x squared to the power of 8, what does that simplify to? Wait. What is x squared to the power of 8? Your indices box. Yes, x to the power of 16, good. Okay, then after that, um, maybe I don't put this 
in Lao Xiao first, okay? Because in interest one, we know that it will be eight when you press the calculator, okay? Be careful, we got this negative sign over here, right? Whenever we have in our uh, life of meal, right? Okay, I want us to be very, very careful. Whenever we have terms, there is a mixture of numbers and also your letters, okay? Because they are need to separate out so that my index loss can apply. So this is a negative two times one over x, huh? Negative two times one over x. So I will get negative two times this eight choose one, okay? So if you press that in the calculator, you will get minus sixteen, right? And x to the power of fourteen, okay? Over here. Divided by x, so it's actually a minus one, huh? right? Anyone not following this so far? Okay. And so we quick if you can open your eyes. Okay. Next, it choose two. We have press it to calculator. You will have twenty-eight. Okay. Now, over here, we got negative 2 over x square. Alright? It means that it is a negative 2 square. Okay? And then x square also. The divide by x square. So, negative 2 bracket square is a 4. 4 times this number 28. We will get positive 112. Okay, because I'll be short of space, that's why I'm trying to verbalize the working. Okay. Then after that, the next one, we got an 8 choose 3, which is 56. And we got a negative 2 to the power of 3. Negative 2 to the power of 3 will give us negative 8. And multiply that with 56. I will get 448 and that is negative 448 to be precise and x squared to the power of 5 is x to the power of 10 for this one the denominator I will get over x to the power of 3 so what we see here is that when I have a minus sign Okay. My terms alternate in terms of the plus minus signs. Okay. Any questions here? I have not yet fully simplified this question yet. Okay. I also want to highlight that if this question, instead of asking for first four terms, if they ask for first three terms, right, you will write this one, this, and this, and then down here you will put dot dot dot. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you put a minus dot 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 or plus dot dot dot. Okay. Let's just stick to the uh, usual that we are always going to be using. Typically, we always do plus dot dot dot. Okay. So you don't need to be too careful about whether you put minus dot 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 or plus dot dot dot. Okay. But just make sure you don't put the uh, dot 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 at least. Uh. Okay. Then after that, moving on from here to simplify the answer. I will have x to the power of 16 minus away 16 x to the power of 14 divided by x I will get x to the power of 13 plus 112 x to the power of 12 minus away 2 so it's 10 followed by x to the power of 10 divided by x to the power of 3 I will be left with x to the power of 7 so 448 times x to the power of 7 then plus dot 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 so we see and check that it is arranged in the descending powers of x okay if after you expand really you realize it is not in descending powers then what should you do? What do you think you should do? What will you do? So check. If you expand everything, like, wow, nice really, then you realize, eh, final answer, not in this any powers of x. Sorry? Do again. 
Do you, do you see that? Yeah. So you might want to check your working. That's one. Okay. Next thing is that if you think your working is perfectly okay, nothing wrong, then maybe you need to switch the terms here. Okay. Usually we don't have to do that. But I'm just uh, pointing out to you. Okay. All right. Let's look at part C. Which is complicated because our power N here does not have a number to it. So in this case, we see that our A is 2x, B is a 1, N is just N. Okay, then how? Right? So we will stick to the usual convention. Okay, just that instead of having a number for n, you will just stick to n now. Okay, so 2x, uh, put brackets around it, we start off with power of n. Okay, then plus n choose 1, right? a, which is 2x, to the power of n minus 1, times b, which is 1. But actually, do we need to it's so troublesome and write down 1. No need, right? Because anything times 1 is the same. So actually, we can do away with the 1 here. Right? Okay. Then after that, we plus n choose 2. 2x to the power n minus 2. Then n choose 3. 2x to the power n minus 3. And we got the four terms out. So we end there and then plus dot dot dot. Right? Can we leave our answer like that? The answer is no, we cannot leave our answer in this manner. Okay. But then, if I say no, how to calculate n choose 1? Confirm cannot press the calculator to find a value, right? Okay. So, um, what I meant was that, earlier on, I said that we cannot leave our answer in this bracket form. Okay. We need to open it up because the formula has been given already. Okay. So, we need to use this formula right, to open up the n choose 1, n choose 2, and n choose 3. Okay. So, let's work with this first. I can write as 2 to the power n x to the power n. Okay, so even the other terms, I need to also uh, speed it up, right? So n choose 1, okay? Actually, anything choose 1 is just the same number, like n. Okay, so don't need to trouble yourself to do this method, right? I need you to know that any number, when we choose 1, is the same number, okay? So save yourself some time. So actually, we should write it 
in this manner. If you want to break it out in brackets and protect it, uh, that's fine also. Okay. For this, n factorial over n minus 2 factorial, you will get n times n minus 1. Okay. Because after that, it times n minus 2 factorial, then can cancel it. Right. So I will do away with this part over 2. Okay, 
plus n. Okay, like this one also, n factorial is actually n times n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, and so on. All right, so actually it's n minus three factorial. So cancel, cancel, and so I get this. Three factorial is six. Just now I change it into two times three, so that I can combine the bases together using my indices laws. Any questions? Okay, you will find that binomial theorem, okay, or uh, no doubt, okay, it is very troublesome because of the lengthy working that we have to write. But it is actually not difficult because it is uh, application of the uh, formula itself. So it's just a matter of practice for us to familiarize ourselves with the uh, formula. Okay.
ไว้
plus 7 over 4x squared minus 14x. Right? So, I think the final answer is correct. Just that in between that step was wrongly written. Okay? Oh, okay, no problem. Right? Any questions? Okay? If you have simplification errors, it's a matter of practice. Okay, so uh, as we do or go along this chapter, okay, the indices laws uh, will really be tested. Okay? Right, we end here for today.